I'm going to play Pokemon Fire Red Rocket Edition, where as a member of Team Rocket, I will cheat, lie, and steal my way throughout Kanto. Every new recruit is gifted a starter, Rattata. Really? No other options like Ekans or Coughing? What they lack in starter options, they make up for with efficiency by providing every Team Rocket member the HM Fly right at the start of the game. Just above our hideout is the Celadon Game Corner. Don't go making us look suspicious now. Dude, I'm not the one looking sus literally standing in front of the hidden switch. On the way out, I run into Ronnie, another Rocket newbie who's gonna teach me all there is to know about stealing Pokemon because immorality is his passion, man. Seeing as we're only grunts we can only steal from kids and old people now go beat the crap out of that little girl halt ma'am i use my ratatat to quick attack her pidgey and sparrow until they both faint the little girl panics asking me to back off because now i get to steal one of her pokemon andrew stole pidgey from little girl Susie. <laughs> I've never before felt so accomplished. Being the ruthless man that I am, I needed to replace my starter. Rattata may suffice for some other low scum, but not for me. Is there an Eevee here? Yup, now you're mine. I shall buy a Thunderstone. Oh, I have no money. Well, let's go find an old man to mug. I'll take your Poliwag. Also, I'll be playing with no items in battle and set mode for this playthrough. I may be a criminal, but I do have some honor. I receive word that my first mission will be at Mount Moon. So I bust out the stolen Pidgey to fly on over there. There. Petrol, the purple-haired rocket admin, instructs us that they hired a super nerd to identify fossils for Team Rocket and that us grunts will need to fend off any trainers from taking them. Looks like most of the people here are just kids. I'm no kid. I'll be 14 next week. I steal this bug catcher's Caterpie and evolve it into a Butterfree soon after. All right, boys, what's the commotion here? It's a freaking Moonstone for crying out loud. They're used to evolve censored little Pokemon. Since when were these puffballs sexualized? When I climb back to the main level, the rest of the gang is complaining about some spiky-haired kid who swept them in Pokemon battles, then took their money. Who taught you guys how to battle, huh? Your moms? <laughs> All right, I'll keep my eye out for that punk. I'm lost, mister. Do you think you could help me out? Andrew, Andrew, I found the super nerd guy. He says he found some mother flipping Pokemon fossils. Ronnie asks if I could stand guard while he reports to Petro our findings. Sounds like a plan. What could go wrong? So I take my place and wait. I tried to fight back, but I couldn't do anything. How could a 10-year-old kid be this powerful? Hopefully, he's not too interested in the fossils. Hey, stop. I found those fossils. They're both mine. I needed a break from that beatdown, so I went home. Oh, wife and kids, I brought home a Pidgey for dinner. Andrew, I talked about this. I ordered a HelloFresh, and they're sponsoring the video. Oh, sweet. You're going to start the steak? I've been our only cook the last nine years of marriage, so it's your turn. But I've never cooked steak. <sighs> HelloFresh has you covered. So I dove into the box and grabbed the Bavette steak recipe. I've never sizzled a steak on my own, so luckily the recipes give step-by-step -step instructions and even cut down the time you spend in the kitchen with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. For a family of five, a trip to the grocery store can take hours while HelloFresh gives us back that family time with pre-portioned ingredients resulting in less food prep and less wasted food. Cost is also something we have to consider when meal planning, so you can bet I was pleased to find out HelloFresh is up to 72% cheaper than dining out or buying our own groceries. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGANDREWSEPT16 for 16 free meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Remember, when you use my link and code that you're also supporting my family and the future of this channel. Thanks HelloFresh. My first mission was a failure. However, the big boss of Team Rocket wanted to chat with me to get a description of this kid that took the fossils. All I took away from that meeting is that Giovanni's assistant's name name is Ariana. Like Ariana Grande? Just as our conversation ended, Blaine, one of the Kanto gym leaders, enters the room. Turns out he's been creating Porygons for Team Rocket, which they then sell at expensive prices to incentivize more gambling. Blaine can no longer do this though, since it can risk his position of gym leader status as suspicion of Team Rocket grows. He suggests maybe Professor Oak can help out, to which Giovanni immediately responds with a heck no! Calling Professor Oak a traitor, Giovanni assigns me a new mission. Go to Bill's house just north of Cerulean City and recruits him to manufacture Porygons for us. Ariana Grande dismisses me.
The roads that connect the cities around Saffron are typically closed, but a simple bribe of $200 is enough to bribe the guards. Before you know it, I'm on Route 5. Before heading over to Cerulean City, I wanted to check out our other base hidden within the daycare. The old man shows me the way down the ladder. Archer, the blue-haired rocket admin, demands the Nidoran to be thrown into the pit with Cubone. No, please, no. No. Some are taking their job serious down here, like this guy who wants to get revenge on his high school bully by becoming an evil scientist. Then there's this guy watching cat videos. On to Cerulean, and I think I could use a bicycle after all this walking. Hand over the bike, buddy. I fought in the war for your sort, you know. Does that give you something worthwhile to think about? Uh, no. As I knock out his Pokemon per him resisting, I learned that fairy typing is in this game along with other Gen 6 mechanics. Huh. Neat. Would you trade a polyworm for my jinx? What's the matter, son? You racist? Ooh, an Ekans. I'll steal that. An Ekans with Intimidate? Never mind, I'll have this one. My boyfriend is cool. I'm a cool guy. I've got a girlfriend. Nobody asked. What a wannabe. Hand over your Zubat. Man, the people of Cerulean are a bunch of tryhards. <gasps> A level 14 Ekans with Intimidate? Gimme, gimme. Over time, I've accumulated enough money to finally purchase a Thunderstone. My true starter then evolves into Jolteon. Unfortunately, I may have evolved it too late because it doesn't learn electric moves anytime soon. Anyways, I make my way over to Bill's house to offer him a job to make Team Rocket's Porygon. One of the things Giovanni sent with me to bribe Bill was a shiny Magikarp. Come on, Bill. I know you want it. Bill says he'll accept under two conditions. First, Team Rocket is to send him regular samples of rare Pokemon. And second, give him all the intel we have on the Sylph Company's new invention. Before heading out, Bill hands me a ticket to the SSN along with a phone to stay in touch with me every now and then. On my way back to town, I run into Blue. He takes it upon himself to battle Rocket members whenever the occasion arrives, so we battle. Compared to his team, mine is underleveled, but I think we can manage. I weaken the Pidgey's attack with round eyes, then start tackling. With only 5 HP, I switch out Jolteon for Poliwag, who water guns them. Blue he Heals with potions, enabling Pidgey to take out my Poliwag. I bring in Zubat to get rid of the bird with a couple bites. Blue sends in his useless Abra, so I take this time to freely swap in my Mankey to KO the Snoozer. She also lunges the Rattata on out of here with two low kicks. Blue's Ace War Turtle KOs Mankey, then has a drawn out duel with Butterfree. After I stun Spore, paralyzing them, we take shots at each other with bubbles and confusions. War Turtle wins the battle, but Jolteon wins the war, giving us the victory against Blue. Hey, get back here, kid. I should be able to steal your Pokemon. I know you're just a 10 year old child. Turns out Ronnie's here too. While catching up with him about his recent burglary, we see the cops, so we immediately scram. Back at the daycare hideout, we watch the broadcast on TV, reporting Ronnie's robbery. The police are on to us as they investigate what happened to the stolen TMs. To make matters worse, the broadcast flickers over to the Kanto champion, Lance. He puts a bounty out for every member of Team Rocket and bans Pokemarts from doing business with us. Way to go, Ronnie. Archer tasks me with a new mission. Delivering some special goods to Lieutenant Surge in exchange for imported Pokemon. A scientist packs me some steroids, and I'm off to Vermilion City. I'm one of Professor Oak's aides. What? No, no, that's AIDS. A-I-D-E-S. Oh, Professor Oak, what have you done? Lance, if you really wanted to stop Team Rocket, why didn't you tell Nurse Joy to ban us? Hmm, what's the R stand for? Ha! I bet it's Rapidash, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. Another Team Rocket admin, Proton, meets up with me at Lieutenant Surge's gym. We deliver the steroids in exchange for Johto Pokemon. However, the crates are stored on the docked cruise ship. As I sneak around the SSN looking for the box set Pokemon, I unintentionally waltz in the middle of a conversation between Lance and the Sinnoh champion, Steven. They talk about how Lance led Johto to victory in the war versus Kanto. Professor Oak, the former Kanto champion, surrendered, and Lance has banned him from battling, but since Lance has taken control, the Kanto economy has been booming. I still need to find those Pokemon, though. Ah, here they are. In the captain's room? Of course. Right as I was about to snatch up the caged Pokemon, the captain notices what I'm doing and accuses me of trying trespassing. Into a battle we go. My Zubat smacks away his tentacle with a couple wing attacks. Just as my little bat was going to faint to another hit from Scyther, they foolishly use focus energy, allowing my Zubat to squeeze in the last move between them. His next Pokemon is Krabby, which I put to sleep with my Poliwag's Hypnosis. I switched to Jolteon, but this proved to be fatal to my starter since all we had were physical attacks while Krabby used Harden. Poliwag suffered a similar fate all because of their potion healing, so I decided it was time for Ekans to use its Intimidate ability. Ah, oh, crap, it has Hyper Cutter. Okay, Butterfree, you got any strats? Ah, freak! A 
critical hit Metal Claw? Off to stun spore them and hope the rest of the team can handle the crab. Wait, they're only using Mudshot? Butterfree pulls it off. It seems the Diglett has a similar issue, possibly only having ground attacks, leading to Butterfree clutching it out to the end. After the battle, I snatch his Diglett and Proton suffers his coughing to poison the captain, making him sick enough to not interfere with us unloading the cargo. Giovanni is pleased with my work, and since his admins are busy, he assigns me a mission that could lead to a promotion. Stop Mr. Fuji from cutting off our supply of profitable Cubone skulls. Isn't that right, Ariana? Yeah, yeah. As I cut through Saffron City, I noticed the fighting gym leader standing outside. I approached him to see what was up. He said he normally can't associate with Team Rocket since it's league policy, but he has a bigger problem on his hands. There's a dude that lives south of here named Mr. Psychic. You see, Mr. Psychic gives out free Psychic TMs to trainers which enable them to blow through the fighting gym. I agree to help and barge into Mr. Psychic's house. Frightened, Mr. Psychic offers to give me the TM if I refuse to follow through with the mugging request. But I'm curious to see what prize the Karate Master has for me. My Pokemon make quick work of his, compelling him to no longer give out the TMs. My reward? A choice between Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. I chose Hitmonlee because we could use an aggressive fighter in the party. Just one route away from Lavender Town. I decide to check out what's going on in the underground scene. Dumb choice. It's prostitution. Prostitution is what happens down there. The man in charge asks me to get one of his ladies back. <sighs> sure. I can't think of a better way to level up an evilness. I find the missing lady dwelling in a different underground path with some guy. He offers me $5,000 to forget about it and leave. Dude, I'm not the hooker here. Man up and let's battle this out. Yeah, this guy was more powerful than I expected him to be. His sand slash clawed through my Butterfree and Zubat with ease. Hitmonlee got revenge for them, then peaced out at the sight of a flying type. Jolteon should theoretically win this, but cannot due to lack of electric moves. Hitmonlee got close to landing another revenge kill, but got gusted instead. Ekans, like the snakes you see on Animal Planet, bit the Pidgeotto right out of the sky, then glared the Rhyhorn before losing. Diglett is my last Pokemon, which fortunately wins the matchup against Rhyhorn. That was our closest battle yet. The man ditches his girl, leaving her to me. She mentioned she'll go back to the old guy, because at least he paid. But she would like a normal job if I can find her one. We'll see, lady. I'm busy. Stealing Growlithe from people? I need to stop getting distracted and just get to Lavender Town already. No! Please don't kill any more of our Pokemon! P -p please don't kill me, Mr. Rocket! Don't worry, kids. It's okay. I'm only here for Oshawott. <laughs> Before entering the Pokemon Tower, I train up Ekans and Zubat to their evolved forms. Man, I sure hope they updated the Crobat evolution in this game. Looks like Blue wants another piece of us. Actually, he doesn't. He's here because one of his Pokemon died. Red, his childhood rival, hurt his Raticate really bad during their last battle on the SSN. It was such a beatdown that the rat bled all the way to the Pokemon Center. Blue ran all the way there for nothing because Raticate had already passed on. Blue continues to vent by spouting his frustration about his grandpa, Professor Oak. How he always failed favored Red more no matter what Blue did. He didn't even care that Raticate died. Blue thanks us for hearing him out and mentions maybe Team Rocket ain't so bad if we're willing to listen. So we tag along to the top. When all of a sudden, a ghost! Luckily, Giovanni gave me a silph scope just in case I ran into any, revealing it to be a Marowak. I led with Arbok, then switched to Golbat in to fly over the incoming ground attack. Then I brought in Growlithe to weaken the Mother Roo some more. Golbat was able to clean up things from there. I had calmed the Mother's spirit. Eh, just kidding. I can't because I'm not pure. I'm evil! I'm evil! Upstairs was Mr. Fuji, ready to defend himself. He sent out his Pokemon that had a clear level advantage over mine. However, I was ready to counter every one of them. Jolteon's ability, Volt Absorbed, Pikachu's electric moves, but I also forgot that electric types can be paralyzed in this game per the static ability. Golbat makes another Cubone Fatherless in a similar fashion to the one before. Wing attacks away the Lickitung, and Arbok crunches on the Ditto transformed into Jolteon. Just as I was about to detain the old man, Archer arrived. He explains to me that Mr. Fuji gave away Kanto's scientific secrets to Lance during the war. Details about the Mewtwo project. Archer also mentions to Fuji that Lance may have instated the anti-crime program, yet hasn't done anything to resolve the Cubone problem. I leave the tower where I happen to spot Professor Oak. He notices the R on my uniform, then puts together in his mind what probably just happened in the building. Yeah, you better keep walking. On my way back to HQ, Red pushes me aside. I report to Giovanni, who is yelling out his frustration about some kid who just broke into the base, plowing through every rocket member with a Charizard. 
Charizard. I informed him of Red's origins and everything else Blue told me. I also inquired about this Mewtwo project I heard about earlier. Giovanni hesitates to tell Grunt, but says I've earned his trust. It was 11 years ago, the final year of the war. Professor Oak and his team of scientists found the mythical Pokemon Mew. It was the strongest creature to ever exist, yet it wouldn't fight due to its soft heart. So they decided to clone a super weapon from it. They called it the Mewtwo Project. At the time, Giovanni was the richest man in Kanto and a member of the Elite Four, basically Batman. He funded the project and employed notable scientists such as Bill, Dr. Fuji, and Blaine to work alongside Oak. One of their experimental dittos didn't react to the genetic cloning as planned, exploding and killing other specimens. This incident became known as the Catastrophe. Fuji then suggested to clone Mew by combining its DNA with that of a human. The scientists agreed to each contribute a sample of their own DNA to be used for the Mew clone. Fuji's theory proved correct, thus creating Mewtwo. Most of you know what happened next. Mewtwo rebelled. Not wanting to do the mission, Mewtwo broke out of the lab, then hid in Cerulean Cave. Soon after, Oak surrendered to Johto. Fuji cowardly pledged his allegiance to Kanto's new leader, Lance. Bill and Blaine were reluctant at first, but eventually followed suit. There was one other scientist named Shigeki, who fled and was never seen again. Giovanni was stripped of his Elite Four status and felt betrayed by Oak for giving up so easily. That's why he created Team Rocket, to take back Kanto. He instructs Ariana to occupy the Viridian City Gym just in case Red comes by there. Then he promotes me to Rocket Admin. <laughs> This levels up my thieving abilities to now steal from women and teenagers. I bump into Ronnie on my way out, to which he then invites himself to join me on my next assignment to interrogate Professor Oak. From Diglett Cave up Route 2, I make a pit stop at the Pewter City Pokemon Center. After Nurse Joy heals my Pokemon, she asks if I can beat up someone for her. Uh, sure? She's dating a cop stationed in Viridian City, who she thinks is cheating on her. He's late to their dates, forgets to call to say goodnight, and worst of all, saw him with another woman when she went down to surprise him. The more he cries, the more I'll pay you. Stop! No one has ever spoken to me like that. I like it. All right, where's that punk cop? In the name of the law, I defend myself. How can you even say that Joy would send someone to attack me? Why would she? Huh? She thinks I'm being unfaithful? I can't see how anything I've done could have made her think. Would you mind watching out for my jinx again? Oh, no. M my lover must be worried sick. Go back to Nurse Joy and tell her that I truly never had eyes for anyone but her. The girl I saw with him was a... Pokemon? How will Nurse Joy reward me for clearing things up? A red flute? The avocado. <laughs> she asks if I know anyone looking for a job. That way she can work less hours. Actually... You mean I can come be a Pokemon Center nurse in Pewter City? I think Miss Hoenn's quite happy where she is. Oh, Miss Hoenn? I get it now. I get it. Golbat, tell this creep to get lost. I escort her to the Pokemon Center where she begins her new career. Oh, hey, I know you. Elizabeth? Yeah. Right? Wow. Very cool you went back and got your degree. Turns out this side quest wasn't a complete waste of time since she gave me the HM strength as a gift. Let's get back to the main mission, interrogating Oak. Well, he's not here. Someone else swings by, though, that being Agatha. She invites me in for some tea. She tells me her history with Oak, specifically how they were a tight-knit couple and that Blue and his sister, Daisy, are their grandchildren. Soon after Blue was born, his father, the son of Oak and Agatha, along with his wife, perished during the war. Agatha wanted to avenge her son, but what did Oak do? He surrendered, and now she sees him as a coward. Shortly after Agatha leaves, Ronnie shows up. He blurts out how we're looking to mug Oak, and obviously Daisy is up for that, so she battles us. Her Pokemon are well-trained, but are not fully evolved, so this fight went relatively well. Just beating her in a Pokemon battle wasn't enough for Ronnie, though. He sicked his Raticate on the poor girl, hyperfanging her. You'll pay for this. With Professor Oak not being in Pallet Town, we report back to Giovanni. The boss scolds Ronnie for spilling the beans to Professor Oak's granddaughter and for pulverizing someone connected to Red and Blue. Giovanni shares that Blaine has been ignoring his messages, so he wants me to swim on over to Cinnamon 
Dunbar Island and give him a beating to show him we mean business. From Pallet Town, I surf southward, confront a trainer with Cloyster, and I could use a good water type, so I steal it. Land at Cinnabar Island and enter the Pokemon Mansion to begin my search for the Ball Gym Leader. As I descend a couple stories, I find a letter which was written for Blaine from Professor Oak, stating that he knows Blaine is in cahoots with Team Rocket and wishes to meet with him soon. A couple trainer fights later increase my bond with Golbat just enough now to evolve into a Crobat. After a little more searching, I found Blaine. He immediately throws hands with me, beginning our battle. Long story short, I was too underleveled and lost. I needed to grind, and why not explore Kanto a bit while doing so? Setting sail eastward brought me to Fuchsia City. I have a chat with a local gym leader, Koga, who wears ninja robes and a jumpsuit of spandex. He's not getting enough gym challengers because trainers only want his gym badge to enable themselves to use the surf HM. However, people are having a hard time finding the secret house where the HMs are stored. He asks me to find the place and bring back a whole stash of surf HMs to distribute himself. Koga then hands me an employee card because they wouldn't normally let Team Rocket inside the safari zone. It wasn't that easy though. The guard worker called me out as sus, then called his boss to make sure. Hey boss, you know anyone by the name of, uh, Mohammed Smith? Time to rebrand the channel. Well, I guess that name wasn't believable enough, so I sprint on down to the owner's house, sneak up behind him, and... <laughs> scares gold teeth right out of his mouth. I nab them before he can react fast enough, then give the employee card another try. Yeah, let me give me the boss a call. Hello, Fluffy V. Uh, Lurk, Warden, sir. I can't hear a word you're saying. You seem legit enough to me, pal. All right, I'm in. What an idiot that guy was. I was just there. I asked the locals if they've seen the secret house. I came across a shiny chain, see? But it fled. Do you think I'm justified in killing myself? I also to find this guy looking to buy gold, so I sell him the warden's chompers. To add insult to the warden's injury, I found the secret house, stole an entire case of HMs, and delivered them to Koga. In return, he rewards me with a trainer card, which allows me to challenge gym leaders, but warns me that I should probably wait to use it until I can steal their Pokemon. Okay, I think I'm ready to rematch Blaine. My Cloyster extinguishes his first two fire types, Growlithe and Ponyta, each with a Surf. Then Rapidash comes in, showing it can actually land a 50% Inferno, unlike the rest of us, burning my my cloister. The horse barely survives my surfing. Blaine heals, cloister comes close again, then faints to burn damage. Jolteon chips away the remaining HP with a quick attack, then thunder waves Blaine's Arcanine. Jolteon is still in the green from Firefang, so he should live another, right? Crowback, get in there and clobber this guy for taking out my starter. After the battle, Blaine levels with me, expressing his feelings of being stuck in the middle between Oak and Giovanni. He also told me that he already knew Oak had lost faith in the Mewtwo project after the catastrophe happened. In the end, he submits to Team Rocket, now willing to make us more Porygons. Giovanni congratulates me on a job well done, but there ain't no rest for the wicked, because Silphco now has their Master Ball prototype ready to catch legendary Pokemon. We must take it before Lance gets his hands on it to capture Mewtwo. My job is to imprison every one of the high-ranked scientists. Don't close the door. Don't close the door. Don't close the door. Don't close the door. Ronnie's also part of the heist and really wants to make up for his past mistakes. That way, Giovanni will think highly of him. He offers to take my keycard down to the admins, which I've been using to lock up the hostages. Don't do it, Andrew. He'll screw up again. Muhammad Smith would never do this. Maybe Ronnie isn't the one to worry about. It's Bill. While Team Rocket has been seizing the building, Bill's been negotiating with the self president for the Master Ball blueprints and prototype. You're calling me the blind loyal idiot? You're the freaking traitor, Bill. Oh, you want to fight? My Hitmonlee just recently learned the move high jump kick. So yeah, there goes your freaking Porygon, Dragonair, and Lapras. Growlithe, burn that pincer to a crisp. Oh, he got me. I meant to say Crobat use acrobatics. Give that Kangaskhan a couple of those too. Oh, uh, Andrew, you idiot. The president doesn't want this to be a big PR mess, so he offers to write me a check. Ooh, how much we talking? I'm afraid you can't pay us off like you do your government. Oh, yeah, Giovanni, <laughs> of course. I wasn't thinking of taking the money at all. I'm totally dedicated to the cause. Giovanni, impressed with the results of the mission, promotes me to rocket executive. I never have to brush my hair again. I also received a crowbar and can now steal from anyone except gym leaders and the Elite Four. Giovanni said I can go home to rest, and he'll take care of the Master Ball.
I got a bad feeling about this. Why is Bill calling me after I just gave him the beatdown of the century? Huh? Meet you in the lab at Cinnabar Island. Well, if it's a trap, I'll just fight my way out of it. He also called in Fuji and Blaine to discuss his plans. He may not have gotten the Master Ball, but he memorized the blueprints to make his own. And he's not after Mewtwo. He wants to catch something else. In order to replicate the Master Ball, Bill needs me to fetch him an Apricorn he planted in Viridian Forest and the pirated Silph Tech that Team Rocket has stolen from the company. Why should I help? I guess Giovanni did opt me out of a million dollars against my will, but I also believe Bill is truly afraid of what is to come. Loitering next to the apricorn is silver giovanni's son he whines about some mumbo jumbo then runs off after harvesting the apricorn my rocket pager beeps so i head back to the hideout where giovanni is pissed at everyone because a child wiped out every single one of them and took the master ball prototype he's especially fed up with ronnie who dropped my key card which allowed red to access the whole building i have had enough LEAVE US, YOU WORTHLESS SCUM! Ronnie is left with no choice from the threat and leaves. Giovanni announces that we'll be relocating to the Viridian City Gym to ambush Red where he'll inevitably try to get his 8th gym badge. While the team started packing, I went to retrieve the Poke Chip with the info Bill needed. A few Pokemon battles along the way leveled up Growlithe to learn Crunch. He was finally ready to evolve, so I used a Firestone to transform him into an Arcanine. With my new legendary Pokemon, I head over to the gym to see how things are. Man, I'm digging this new costume. Nobody will suspect I'm a rocket. Yeah, makes me think about why we didn't do this all along. Things look like they're being taken care of over there, so I go deliver my gathered items to Bill. With the new Master Ball created, Bill says the location of the Pokemon we're looking for is only known by one person, Shigeki. Who? Huh? He was the scientist who went into hiding after the Mewtwo project. Fuji then shares that since Mewtwo carries each of the scientists DNA who created him, that it somehow created a link with each of them knowing their whereabouts at all times. So it's off to Cerulean Cave to ask Mewtwo where Shigeki is hiding. This guy won't let me in though unless I get permission from the champion? Really man? You're guarding the entrance of a top secret cave with a Parasect? Yeah, you don't deserve this job. I make my way to the basement of the cavern where Mewtwo awaits me. The monstrosity is at level 7! How am I supposed to capture it, let alone beat this thing? Over time, I discovered that Mewtwo's four moves are Reflect, Light Screen, Amnesia, and Psychic. And for some odd reason, they mostly use the former three. No! Welp, time to save scum. Ah, come on! I reset for nothing! Anyways, I defeat Mewtwo again, and he reveals where Shigeki is hiding. That's him, hiding in plain sight all along as a drunk tutorial. I confront Shigeki. Inside his home, he asks if I'll keep his whereabouts a secret in order to protect his family. Only then will he tell me where he hid. The catastrophe. Uh, okay, sounds fair. Right along the eastern shore of Cinnabar Island, Shigeki froze the forbidden Pokemon in the depths of the sea. Shigeki walks over to his computer, deactivating the device that is freezing the creature. Back to Cinnabar Island I go, and I could already tell things were different here. The very existence of terrain was quite literally glitching in parts where it shouldn't. I hopped on my cloister and began surfing. There it was, missing no, the very being that corrupted multiple save files of mine when I was just a child. I took no risks here, went into my bag, and immediately flung that master ball right at it. As Bill and I celebrate my recent addition to the team, Blaine and Blue come by to see the commotion. Blue is startled upon gazing at it. He's already seen it before. When he was a kid, he'd break into his grandpa's basement beneath the lab. It was the freakiest thing he'd ever seen down there. So Oak has a secret lab. Well, I gotta see for myself, but the door is locked. Thankfully, I still have the crowbar handy that Giovanni gave to me when I last got promoted. I go straight to the bookshelves in the back, because one of them has gotta have a secret switch. Of course, I'm right, so I descend into Oak's secret lab. Whoa. I interact with everything to learn as much as I can. Sometimes dittos would fall from the ceiling. Sometimes the guard robots would attack me, and they even had Pokemon of their own. This one called me a big loser and now my feelings are hurt. Each of these computers held portions of Professor Oak's diary entailing what he was up to down here. He schemed up a plot to create a superhuman trainer that he would be in control of. Oak called up a sterile widow who was blindly devoted to him since their youth. Once this master trainer was created, she would adopt and raise him according to Oak's will. Turns out the professor surrendered as champion, that way Lance would let him live. Then in 10 years time, he'll use Red to conquer the Elite Four, taking back the throne, giving him complete control over Kanto once again. 
My rocket pager beeps. Did something happen at Viridian Gym? Giovanni, what's going on here? Red clean house with you guys? What? You're leaving? Who's gonna lead Team Rocket? Giovanni leaves me his briefcase. Silver whines that his father is leaving him again. And Ariana, the secret lover, takes her place as the new Viridian gym leader. But what I'm wondering is what's in the case? Open the case. $10,000, baby! Let's go! And that's not all. The final promotion. I am now the Rocket Boss. Wait, are those cornrows? You do know that I'm white. Right? Now no one is safe from my thievery. I begin my trek across Kanto to face every gym leader. As a rocket boss, just look how smug I am when throwing in my Pokeball. Brock has no Pokemon I desire. Misty, on the other hand, how can I say no to a Gyarados? For Lieutenant Surge, I do him a favor of burning the rodents that infest his gym. As the new CEO, I gotta keep up with the new trends by going vegan. So I have Crobat swoop up Erica's plants for me. Now there's the man who goes for what he wants. Ooh, tell me more, baby. Koku's mom must have told him they have crowbats at home because that ain't no crowbat and sabrina unlike most of her co-workers has a very powerful pokemon i would like for myself andrew what are you doing here kicking your butt with your own medicine now give me the badge blaine Finally, it's about time I can shut that yap. With all eight gym badges in my possession, I shall take on Lance? Shouldn't you be at the Pokemon League? He mistook me for Giovanni at first because of my dapper clothes. He goes on to say that he is no longer the champion. Some little kid just took the title from him. With this anger bottled up, he takes it out on me in a Pokemon battle. All right, I was not expecting that. But thankfully, I had Jolteon in front of the party to one-shot Lance's Gyarados. His Aerodactyl came next, and this time, Discharge didn't quite get the one-hit KO. No worries, I have a quick attack. Ah, oh, shoot. I guess that means Jolteon loses. Holy smokes, what a save. Quick attack again. What a nail biter. Okay, Jolteon will fall to Dragonair, but at least he pulled off the Thunder Wave first. This allowed Crobat to knock out the dragon with ease, but the bigger dragon is now here, Dragonite. No matter the Pokemon I switched in, this hunk was thick and could be healed by Lance's potions. After two of my Pokemon fainted, Alkazam finished the job. There was still one remaining, Kingdra. Another two of my Pokemon are bested by another dragon of lances and i only have one pokemon left i had no idea there was going to be a significant battle like this one on my way to victory road so i had boxed gyarados to have cloister surf for us in the end cloister miraculously won the battle with a low amount of health all while being paralyzed for stressing me out that much lance i'm gonna take your dragonite M my dragonite how could this happen I traversed through Victory Road, and there it was, Indigo Plateau. Hey, look who's here. It's Ronnie. Looks like he's still robbing every now and then, just on his own this time. The TV flickers on. It's a news report interviewing the new champion of Kanto, Blue. As the declared champion, he's pretty much the leader of Kanto now. So what's he gonna do? Uh, we're gonna work to, um... Let everyone ride bikes indoors. Dude, why are they letting a kid run things? Oh, actually, that's good legislation. Oak is shocked with what just happened and storms off to Blue. Bill and I try to follow him, but the lady won't let us in. Who could help us in a time like this? Ronnie! What? What's that? You need help? What? You mean my help? I never thought you'd say that. Leave it to me, Andrew. Redicate! <laughs> Thanks for clearing the way, buddy. On to the Elite Four. Actually, no. They all still haven't recovered from the beatdown Red just gave each of them. Oh, no. Am I too late? Oak, just ahead of me, walks up to his puppet Red and his grandson Blue, who just lost his champion title. Being the terrible grandfather he is, Oak tells Blue how disappointed he is in him. No sympathy, just demeaning words. He and Red then go into the Hall of Fame together. The next press conference begins to commemorate Red becoming the new champion. Since Red cannot speak for himself, Professor Oak states he will speak for the boy. He begins to lay out the changes for Kanto, which includes shutting down Team Rocket, bringing legendary Pokemon into government control, and that Lance will be detained at once. Stop! 
Blaine and Fuji disclose that Red isn't even a real human and that there's proof. Startled, they run back into the Hall of Fame and lock the door. Then Agatha has an epiphany. Oak wasn't being a coward. This was a cunning way of taking back Kanto. She summons her ghost Pokemon to block everyone from doing anything. I bust out my silver scope to unveil the Gengar and Haunter's identities. I step up to Agatha. Not willing to move aside, we engage in a Pokemon battle. I figured this would happen, so I led with Arcanine to crunch her ghost Pokemon into little pieces. Arbok kind of foiled those plans. However, I had my psychic sweeper Alkazam blow through that snake along with mind-blowing the second Gengar. Agatha's mischievous countered my mastermind, to which I simply replied back with my Arcanine gnawing crunches, and Jolteon shocks to death her Crobat. With her out of my way, I ascended to the Hall of Fame's entry. It may have been locked from the inside, but I still have this trusty old crowbar. You slimy little radical! He commands Red to get rid of me, so we fight. I've been waiting for this moment, Red. I led with my starter, which ended up being the right choice, discharging Red's Charizard. Next was his Pikachu, and thankfully, right before the Elite Four, I had used up my TMs to teach moves like Toxic to Jolteon. Red is supposed to be some ultimate trainer, yet he heals my Jolteon by using Thunders, which our Volt Absorb ability converts to HP. However, I did forget, yet once again, that static effects electric types in this generation, which enables enables Red Snorlax to body slam my evolution upon its entrance. Arcanine gets revenge for his spiky friend, close combating the Snorlax in the face. Since that move lowered our defenses, I swapped in Gyarados to resist the incoming Aqua Tail. My Water Onyx begins to Dragon Dance, increasing both her speed and attack power. It's already over, Red. Ah, crap. The Lapras beat my Gyarados. It's okay. I have the secret weapon. Missing no. Calm mind to boost your specials. Why is this Lapras so cracked? Critical hit Ice Beam to 3 HP. Missing no. Get rid of that dinosaur time to check out missing no signature move super glitch Bill said you were supposed to be the greatest. Well, you know how the saying goes. Fight Dragonite with Dragonite. I rock tomb to ensure I go first next turn, then take out the fat dragon. The celebration is short-lived, though, when Red's Alakazam shatters my dragon the next turn. Now it's Alakazam versus Alakazam. Red has the level advantage, but I'm an actual human with a brain that can strategize. We both set up with Calm Minds until we're ready to barrage each other with attacks. I put up a light screen before doing so. The duel goes back and forth for a while because I have recovered a heal while Red uses full restores. Many turns later, our genius comes out on top. Professor Oak tells Red to get out of the way and that he'll handle me himself. Agatha breaks into the room, exclaiming to Professor Oak that she had him all wrong and now realizes what he was trying to do all along. She professes she has always loved him. She just didn't understand the secret plan. How dare dare you? Oak wasn't having it. She belittled him at his lowest and doubted him the entire last decade. Tauros, Giga Impact! What the heck is going on here? Professor Oak isn't going down without a fight. Thus, the real final battle begins. That Tauros looks like a powerhouse, so I switch in Arcanine to Intimidate, dropping its attack stat. I continue this with Gyarados, who also has the Intimidate ability. As I continue swapping, Oak catches on and begins to use Workup. I keep Gyarados in this time to start Dragon Dancing. Tauros then pulls out the Unexpected. Swagger. This boosted my attack by two stages, but if I hit myself in confusion, it's over. With all my heart, I put my faith in Gyarados. <laughs> You did well, my queen. Now return to your Pokeball and let our own Jolteon handle this. The next few turns show us toxic stalling while Oak's evolution having nothing to counter. Once his faints, he sends out an Executor. I thought Arcanine would not only resist this, but also weaken the Wood Hammer with Intimidate. Critical hits happen. Nonetheless, the swing of tempo is back in my control as I send in Dragonite to clobber the coconut palm tree with a couple flies. Oak's fourth Pokemon is a beast not to be reckoned with, that being Gyarados. I tried to slow it down with my own Gyarados intimidating and ice fanging. Sadly, we lose this mirror match. Secret weapon time. I'm kind of all over the place with the commands I give Missing No. Sometimes Super Glitch, sometimes Calm Mind, sometimes Giga Drain. I don't know how to use this creature. Somehow though, I beat Gyarados with it. Now come on, Missing No. Do something. Bill believed in you. 
Yes! The clutch freeze! Goodbye, Arcanine! Oak's final Pokemon is Venusaur. I finally know how to deal with this opponent. A couple psychics later, and that's the battle, folks! Lance and the police barge in. They arrest Oak for violating his ban of participating in battles and for killing Agatha. Oak screams at Red to throw out his Pokemon to protect them while he puts his name in as champion. All of a sudden... Being the catastrophe that Masingno is, it starts corrupting the machinery. Law enforcement grabs a hold of Oak, and I too am taken into custody. We're taken to court to find out what will be done to us. The first verdict is for Red. He's not a normal human, he's not a legal citizen of Kanto, and he can't lead Kanto on his own. So the champion title falls back onto his predecessor, Blue. However, Blue no longer wants the position since he no longer seeks approval from his grandfather, thus defaulting champion status back to Lance. Next up is Professor Oak. He is accused of man slaughter and conspiring to upend the government. However, somehow no eyewitnesses or proof has come forth for those. But the jury did agree that he violated the no Pokemon battling rule and is therefore banished from Kanto. As for me, I'm part of Team Rocket. I'm the boss of Team Rocket. I've smuggled Pokemon, stole a bicycle, forged a trainer card, sold to the cop, been seen with a prostitute, and stole many Pokemon. Yeah, not looking good for me. 19 years in prison is my sentence. We then get another cutscene showing the Johto Professor and Bill teaming up to create another super trainer. Meanwhile, I'm in jail. Lucky for me though, Shigeki bailed me out for keeping his hiding place a secret. Hmm, what's this guy in for? Come on, man. If you had a carnivore like mine, you'd have done it too. And that's what it's like to play Pokemon as Team Rocket. Give the video a like to support the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. You all have a good one. Thanks.